As we reflect upon God's word now, let us come together in prayer. Lord, help us in our understanding that even as I speak and as we reflect together, it might be your word, your Holy Spirit that we are listening to, that all we say and do will be inspired to your good, to the truth that you would reveal to the world as you send us forth as a, as a beacon of praise and a sign of your love. Lord, this we pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. The people of God, the people of Israel, are repeatedly shown through the testimony of Scripture to be in personal mindsets and the world contexts that make it very difficult to be a worshiping people. Noah is the lone person in the world who serves and worships God. What a context for being a people of God. The, the, the only one left. Abraham, at home and abroad, has a relationship with God that despite a lot of worldly pressures on him to turn to polytheism, are never realized in him. And he remains true and upholds faith so that he becomes an example of faith even for the Christian church, as it's found in the letter to the Hebrews. Marginalized, ridiculed, persecuted, like Israel's fall from influence from the days of David and Solomon, the church in the aftermath of Christendom faces backlash and retribution in a post-colonial age, along with the continual battle with spiritualities that serve as easy religions for those who want to believe their own thing, be accountable to no one, and ultimately serve themselves. The church today is not facing anything that God's people has not faced before, in other contexts, perhaps in other ways. But the struggle is the same, even if it's in its own history. The only difference is that it is our present. This is our time. This is this is something we can't look back and say it, it, it was their problem. This is us. This is the situation we face in our faith and our relationship with God. Who is this? The people of Jerusalem, the whole city, says Matthew, were asking, who is this? And for the missionally minded, this is exactly what the church wants. We would love to find ourselves in circumstances where the whole world, the whole world around us is asking about Jesus. We, we just, now how do we make that happen? Yet, even in Jesus' time, it takes something more than waiting for it to happen or keeping it to ourselves to bring about that kind of response. But when the world around saw the response to Christ's arrival, how the people sang and shouted and drew their attention, it drew their attention from all their customs, from everything that they were going about to get ready for Passover, all the routines, everything that that that, that time was about, all the focus over to the temple. All of a sudden, they're looking at the gate and there is Jesus coming in and it spoke to them from the very heritage of their faith. The prophet Zechariah spoke to God's people in the worst of their suffering, spoke to them about forgiveness, spoke to them about redemption and salvation from the hurts and the sufferings that come from sin, not just their own sin, but the reality of the world that was oppressing them. And in the midst of their troubling situation, while they were leaderless, homeless, hopeless, Zechariah tells the people of God, Look, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on the colt, on the foal of a donkey. It's about the humblest set of circumstances you could imagine. Into the context of a conquered nation, a segmented and divided people, a people without a unified sense of identity, into all of this, Jesus rode right into the midst right before the, the Roman government standing on the wall. What is going on down there? And the whole city came out to see. What is this going on? In 
the past year, our Queen Elizabeth II died. And even for the humble person, I really believe at, at, at her core, she was a very humble person. Her death was marked with pomp and with ceremony. Her son Charles will be celebrating his coronation in just, just a short while. To no less ceremony, you can be sure. Jesus showed himself to be the true king of kings and lord of lords. Not because he filled some worldly idea of what a king should look like or do. That wasn't, Zechariah's vision was not of a worldly king, but one who had certainly transcended all worldly expectations. Jesus came in as a true king should, looking like a true king should, by fulfilling what we all ought to do. How, if we are truly heirs of God's kingdom, how we need to come into each other's lives with spectacular humility and fulfill God's word. To fulfill the prophet's calling to each of us. To, to follow John's example in, in faithfulness. To follow Christ's witness, testimony, teaching. And really to make sure that if we call ourselves Christian, that our lives do truly embody Christ's love as we celebrate that to the world. Jesus accepted God's example. He accepted the, 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 the prophet's description of what a king should look like. And the people recognized him for it and shouted. They shouted their, their hosannas. They shouted in, how, in the spirit of hallelujah, which means in hosanna, that we pray for salvation. You are our prayer for salvation is what they were really saying. There comes the answer to prayer. They waved their palms. They laid down their coats and some palms in the road and they rejoiced. Blessed is he who comes in whose name? In the name of the Lord. If the world could see Christ in that way, instead of the way we often show Christ, don't you think they'd ask? Who's this you're talking about? Who's this you're acting like? Who's this that you resemble? Or perhaps put it this way. Can we seek to show and celebrate Christ in a way, in the way that we came to know him when we accepted Christ and began to rejoice in our salvation through faith in Jesus, to live every day for him as we have? Now, can we pass that along? We, we don't have Jesus riding into town on a small donkey or a, I always like to say, you know, maybe Jesus would have come into town in a pretty humble car. We, we don't have Jesus doing that, though, do we? But the people in our families and in our community and in our context experience Christ by the way we celebrate Christ Jesus in our lives. And when they experience it too, they, they were, they're going to ask. And they'll want to know Jesus the way they will want to know and celebrate why did Jesus die on the cross. What does that offer them? All the city came out to wonder and see this man who fulfilled the portrayal of the prophetic image. And Jesus would not stop there. In a short time, it would be Jesus fulfilling the vision of another prophet, of Isaiah, who said, and we read, I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. We pray for salvation for ours. Hosanna. We pray for others. Hosanna for all. Hosanna to the highest. And God sends us and sent us salvation and sends it still in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah and Hosanna. Amen.